of suite number four uh, is a virtuoso piece. It's one of the hardest movements in the later suites. It's just a perpetuum mobile of the left hand and also a sh it can be a showcase for the right hand. One of the uh, most important sources of trying to understand the character of Bach's music was written by Johann Matheson. And Johann Matheson was a contemporary of Bach. He was a scholar, a composer. Matheson writes the uh, Italian jigs, which are not used for dancing but for fiddling, uh, force themselves to extreme speed or volatility though frequently in a flowing and uninterrupted manner, uh, perhaps like the smooth, aero-swift flow of a stream. So with that in mind, let's look at the jig of the fourth suite. Um, the book, The Dance and the Music of Johann Sebastian Bach by Meredith Little and Natalie Jane uh, is also a book I would recommend you read. It is differentiating between three types of jigs, uh, the Italian Giga one, the Giga two, and the French jig. And um, this fourth suite jig belongs to the category of the Italian Giga one, which is uh, more simple harmonically and uh, rhythmically. And since it is simple harmonically, uh, it can go fast. It feels fast, and in my opinion, it should go fast. Um, a lot of people play it a little slower, which works too. I'm gonna add links below to some other uh, Giga Type 1 uh, that Bach wrote, and you'll really hear uh, how this is different from the Giga Type 2, which is a more complex dance. <laughs> And certainly from the French jig, as we have in the fifth suite, which is characterized by the dotted rhythm. The other two types of jigs that are mentioned in this book um, have harmonic changes within the triplets uh, in the jig, but this uh, giga one, uh, which is simpler, does not. Um, so if there is a harmonic change, it uh, almost always happens on the downbeat or in the middle of the bar. And as I like to say, when the harmonic pacing is simple, harmonic language is uh, simple, um, this in my mind calls for a faster tempo because the audience has less to process. Another interesting point is that Bach wrote 15 jigs in the Giga 1 category, all of them for keyboard uh, with the exception of two. So to me, this uh, movement could work also for keyboard. It sounds keyboardish. <laughs> notice that the slurs vary they're not all over three notes uh, the first example is in bar two um, so we'll start from the beginning and here is uh, in Anna Magdalena's copy these three notes are separate and this happens in the corresponding place in the second half of this movement so so here those three notes are again separate, so this is not a mistake. Uh, this movement is a real showpiece for the virtuosity of the right hand, the uh, bowmanship or bowwomanship. Looking at bars three and four, and again bars five and six, there is a wonderful symmetry uh, with variety that Anna Magdalena's copy has, um, and it makes total sense to me. I don't understand why anybody would want to ignore these varieties in articulation, um, which add a whole new dimension to an otherwise uh, simple, uh, simple movement. Let's look at bars three and four. And then... Uh, so um, this is much better, in my opinion, than just playing three and three. Uh, each triplet. Let's look at the notes in red, starting bar seven. Notice that bars 15 and 16 have a short, short, long diction. So if 
we look uh, at bar 15, um, and then bar 16, bar 17, uh, uh, so this is a short, short, long uh, diction or um, pulse, rather. And There's a stretto. Uh, stretto is when um, in a fugue uh, voices come in uh, in a succession uh, one after the other. So there's a, a denser uh, entrance uh, to voices. Uh, and here um, we have that. Uh, as if uh, the downbeat of uh, bar 18 uh, came early um, and stepping on the uh, older phrase. There are a lot of echoes in this movement, um, pairs of bars that could uh, be played uh, more and less. Um, notice how bar 14 can be an echo of bar 13 if we use uh, Anna Magdalena's slurs. Um, <laughs> Starting up. So again. It is the simpler bars, the repeated bars, uh, that are, could benefit most from varying uh, slurs. For example, bars 22 uh, and 23. Um, in my uh, opinion, and the way I see Anna Magdalena's slurs, is uh, so that the B flat, F sharp, and G are um, articulated differently, um, alternating between separate B flat and slurred. Again, separate and slurred. Tempo, if I can do it. It's been a while. Cadence bars such as bar 26 call for punctuation, um, like an end to a sentence, dots at the end of a sentence. Uh, take a little time before the upbeat to bar 27. So. Uh, of course, this is uh, the last time, yes, the last time that the opening motif is coming back, and uh, we want to show that. Bar 35 starts a cycle of fifths, uh, and we again have that short, short, long uh, diction. <laughs> Follow the red dots. Uh, <laughs> difficult slurs. When we reach a bar 33 and 34, I like a darker color um, and uh, a more legato to show that, uh, playing more legato. So if we start a couple of bars before that. Uh, <laughs> So there's that. Uh, I like varying my slurs in bar 34, um, and it looks like Anna Magdalena likes that too. Starting down and up, it creates a beautiful, beautiful uh, variation. <laughs> It's like saying the same sentence, but uh, with a different uh, articulation. The slurs in bars 35 and 36, uh, which are a sequence, are also not repeated. And then... Uh, there's so many varieties here. Um, 
it's very difficult to play it and you basically have to memorize those slurs. I think that even if you don't follow these exact slurs, uh, it would be a great idea to change uh, your slurs, um, not just play and... <laughs> short short long passage ends and we have two big beats per bar the progression happens twice each bar so beginning of the bar in the middle of the bar sorry, the red dots and then and then we when we reach bar 40 uh, we have a um, seventh chord broken down Thank you for watching. See you next time.